obviously a big win for those who've been calling for a name change to the organization for years. Nick, I'll start with you. What was your reaction to this? It's about damn time. And we'll go a little history and then get contemporary because I think that helps explain why this was so long overdue. The first time this term was ever used in an American newspaper was when it was, when it was listed as essentially a killed Native American scalp and the requisite reward that went with it. This team, Washington, back when they were Boston, the name was changed to this, why? Because George Preston Marshall was their owner and he was a notorious racist. Once George Preston Marshall moved the team to Washington DC and it was the only team south of the Mason-Dixon line in the, in, in the NFL, he added to the team's fight song, Fight for Old Dixie. George Preston Marshall famously said he would integrate his team when the Harlem Globetrotters integrated theirs. And the only reason Washington actually signed a black football player 16 years after the rest of the league did was because the federal government threatened to make them move out of a federally funded stadium. And so once they were forced to, due to financial pressure, they signed a black player, which you look at what has happened right now, Dan Snyder has been forced to essentially, due to financial pressure exerted by a lot of entities, most notably FedEx, he is being forced to change the team name. So while I'm glad it has happened, I do not give Daniel Snyder any credit. Now, I am not calling Daniel Snyder a bigot or a racist or any of those things, but he was overwhelmingly and incomprehensibly stubborn on this point. Seven years ago, seven years ago when he was asked about it, he said he will never change the name. It's that simple, write it in all caps, never. And he is only now changing the name because his bottom line demands that he does. So I'm glad it's happening. It was a blight on American sports that one of our major professional teams nickname was a dictionary defined racial slur. But I, this is not one where I'm comfortable patting Washington on the back for doing something they should have done a generation or two ago, Kevin Wilds. Yeah, I think this is, uh, it's hard to be super optimistic about this, like you said, Nick, since it had such a, uh, a terrible history. And at the same time, I'm not going to be terribly pessimistic about it either, because this has been a long time coming, and this has been a fight for, that has been going on for decades in the sports world. Um, I went to, uh, I'm going to give a special shout out to not only everyone who has been working on changing this, but sp specifically the two groups that have given me this list here that I'm about to read off. This is Corey Collins did a great article for Sporting News, and even he cited changethemascot.org. It's, um, it's a great resource, and it's a grassroots organization that has been push pushing for changing mascots and team names. So in 1969, activists at Dartmouth changed their name, and I'm going to run through the list and see where we are today. University of Oklahoma in 1970 changed their mascot. Marquette dropped their mascot. Stanford and the University of Massachusetts changed their name in 1972. I, my mom went to the University of Massachusetts. I didn't even know they weren't always the Minutemen. Uh, Dickinson State, Syracuse, Nick, your universe, your alma mater, St. Bonaventure, Southern Oregon, Siena College, Eastern Michigan, St. John's, Miami, Ohio, Seattle University, Louisiana Monroe, Arkansas State, and North Dakota, in addition to several minor league teams and high schools all around the country. Greg, I think this is a, a sign of progress. It's been a long time coming, but progress is happening. To that last point, I, I want to jump right there, the progress. Um, I'm not going to get into the history. I'm not going to get into all the the personal um, ties, but I will speak to progress. When you look at our nation and you look at the climate of our nation, it is about moving forward, being aware, being conscious, um, recognizing uh, the other's plight, whatever that means, whoever the other may be. And I, I, I emphasize that because this is for all of us involved. If we're going to be a better nation, a better human race uh, collectively, these things have to be considered. You have to recognize someone else's point of view. Um, the name, whether it means something 
to one person, it may mean something different to uh, the actual ethnic group or someone else involved. And so we have to consider these things because this is where we are as a nation. This is the temperature that we're experiencing. Um, and I think this will be the remaining climate moving forward. Um, and, and kudos again, like you said, Nick, uh, to FedEx stepping up and really applying pressure to uh, Daniel Snyder. And Wilds and you and Greg both allude to, I think, the idea of does it stop here, or are there other team names that should be changed? I, I think it muddies the water a bit if we don't acknowledge on the front end, as we've said, Washington's football team was in its own special category because their team name was an actual dictionary-defined slur. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't at least consider what does the Native community think of the Cleveland Indians, my hometown Kansas City Chiefs, the Atlanta Braves, and the Florida Seminoles. And so I think the Seminole tribe in Florida has been very vocal, at least what I've read, that the vast majority of members of that tribe feel like it is a partnership with Florida State. They want the name to remain. They feel like it is a tribute, in which case, perfect. Leave the name, like that is their decision to me to make. I think with the Braves and the Chiefs, it's a little grayer. I think they both should. It's an embarrassment that at Chiefs games, we still do the tomahawk chop and some of that more cartoonish Native American imagery. That absolutely should change, even if those names can remain. But while I don't find the Cleveland Indians name as offensive as what Washington's has been, because it's not a slur, I am forced when I think about this to say, should a team mascot be a people? And the answer to that is, to me, obviously, no. It's not just removing Chief Wahoo, the offensive symbolism associated with that team. It's also, if there were, I'm Italian. If Oklahoma City was getting a basketball team and they said, hey, we thought about it, we're gonna call them the OKC Italians. And Seattle's getting one too, and they're gonna be the Seattle Koreans. We would say, well, that's ridiculous. Even if you're like, no, 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 we're gonna pay tribute. It's gonna be, we would say, you can't name your team after a people. And so I do think when it comes to the Cleveland Indians, that discussion has to be had. It is not nearly as awful. What Washington's team name had been was awful due to the history, due to who named them, all of it. Cleveland's to me is not in that category, but it is a discussion where we should listen to the native community and say, are you cool with it if you're not or if you are, but you would like them to change some of the things like Chief Wahoo, move in that direction, or if that's a name that should be changed as well, we should listen to them just like we should listen to them on the Chiefs or the Braves also, Jenna. And again, guys, after mounting pressure from corporate sponsors, from fans, from players themselves, as you all said so well, this is progress, this is a step forward, and so we should be optimistic as we look ahead. All right, we're going to take a little break now, change gears. Coming up on the other side, the Lakers lose another star. What does this mean for their title chances now? This is First Things First.